one, otherwise John Ruddock speaking, lit of Honduras, center of America, but now semi-retired, living in the Western Assembly's home in Claremont, California. I am now about to attempt to do that which I may not be able to do. Tell a little about the work in its first years in Honduras. I am now 85 years, six months, and have returned from surgery just two weeks ago. So you can understand I'm not quite able for the task I'm set out to do. However, as the saying is, there's nothing beats a trial. So, here go. I am sorry I will not be able to give the exact dates or other information that you might wish to know, as I am drawing entirely from memory. So can just say that which I remember regarding the work. I understand that round about the year 1900, there were some missionaries, those of the Central American Mission went that way. However, because of many reasons, the first was health conditions, which at that time were very, very primitive indeed. And at the same time, there was not much encouragement from the Roman Catholic Church, who reigned supreme in those days in that land. Some of those missionaries had to return almost immediately, as their health would not stand the unsanitary conditions which remained in the country at that time. And some even gave their lives at that time. There was a Miss Arthur who, from uh, Oakland direction, passed home to be with the Lord, taken by the deadly and troublesome plague that plagued the land at that time, malaria. Others had to return home too. However, as time went on, there was a Mr. Knapp from New Jersey somewhere. And he was able to establish himself in San Pedro Zula on the north coast. About the year 1911, the American Bible Society were looking for a culture to take over all Central America and Venezuela as well as Colombia. No one could be found in the United States, so they inserted an advertisement in an English paper. There was a young man at that time by the name of Alfredo Hawkins. He was saved by the grace of God in his youth, and he was much exercised about the foreign field, so much so that he began to study medicine, in which this would help if he ever had the opportunity of becoming a missionary. He saw this on and wrote to the American Bible Society with the result that very soon he found himself in Central America. At that time, the headquarters for the American Bible Society was in Panama. So he spent about eight years traveling all over the country. And the country, of course, was rough and wild in those days. And uh, transportation was very primitive. 
But his little community, along with another companion, made their way day after day through all of Central America, uh, spreading the good news of salvation by selling Bibles and giving away portions of the Word of God. I was told by the American Bible Society that they never had a culprature like Don Alfredo as he was known. He could endure more hardship, he could put up with so much, and he could even sell more Bibles than any other culprature they had. However, as time went on, the, uh, the wicked climate began to tell on him. At times he was left almost dead on the way, but God had compassion upon him and raised him up. At other times he would found himself in a den of thieves, and they lightened his burden quite a lot. At other times he was in danger of his life by snakes, which he could have told many stories. At other times he was in danger of the authorities. He passed through many of the many, many revolutions that plagued Central America at that time. At one time, they mistook him for a general and took him captive. And uh, he maintained that he was no general, he was an English man selling back. However, they kept him locked up for a little while, and they said, you can put an Englishman in prison if you like, but you can't take his tea away from him. So they brought him a cup of tea. However, when the head man came in and they told him that they had captured this general, which was an enemy of the government at that time. But this man wanted to see him. So he was led, John and Fred was led into his presence. And all the two of them burst out laughing. They knew each other very well. And this man knew John and Fred, his history and what he was doing. So, the poor man that captured them, well, they had to take a back place. Yes, and at other times he had many things that he had to run from. Once he almost lost his life as the little gospel chapel in which he happened to be was raided by some of those who disliked the gospel. He was able to crawl out through a narrow window and get into a cornfield and hide amongst the stalks of corn. But malaria got him at the last, and he was advised by the doctor to get out, and advised to go to Canada and freeze the malaria out of his system. This he did. Then he returned to England, and there he met a young lady who was willing to share his life in Honduras. So he was commended from an assembly, I believe, in Torquay, England. And out he came, praying that the Lord would open up the way for him to look it in some place. The Lord, of course, had all in mind, and at that time, Mr. Knapp, who had been able to stick it out for a few years, had been ordered by the doctor to return home to the States, or malaria would take him out. 
So when he got to San Pedro Sula on the north coast, arrangements were made that Donald Fred would take over the work. This he did. So there he was with the little gospel chapel and a house to live in, or rather a shack. But the Lord prospered him there and helped him greatly, and a little small assembly was formed. Now we ourselves had been in Guatemala for four years, being commended from Los Angeles in California for the work in Central America. We had to leave there too because of health reasons and to be paid a visit to Scotland and then back to my own folks here in California and we repaid the visit of Mr. Hawkins that he had made to us while in Guatemala. When we found him there, circumstances were not very, very enticing. However, we saw at once that there was a wonderful opening there for the gospel. There was the whole north coast of Honduras, no missionaries of any kind there. So after looking around and praying to the Lord, we eventually established ourselves in Trujillo. Now Trujillo was the place that Columbus landed in when he came over to this part of the world at first. And we found it quite a fortified place with good, strong buildings. So we located there and started working in that Place. There was a revolution going on when we arrived in Trujillo. In fact, the Lord very, very graciously took care of us as we journeyed to that city. We had some difficulty in transportation, but eventually we arrived there. The banana company had a train, and this train was the daily train for bananas. But we were told if we wished to ride as a banana, we would be very welcomed on board. Well, when we got there, as I said, this revolution was still going on and the place was filled with soldiers. Now the place that we were able to rent had a very large room suitable for meetings. So our first meeting was one Sunday afternoon. We invited the soldiers to come in. They were billeted in an old schoolhouse next door to us. So they came in, and although we had no seating accommodations or no platform, and nothing that would uh, attract your attention, yet they came in, rifles and all, stood at attention while we were able to present them to the Lord Jesus Christ the one who on Calvary's cross shed his precious blood for poor, guilty, fallen man. They were invited back again, and they came back again. And they might say, while they were there in Trujillo, they attended those meetings. But very soon, well, the revolution uh, was over, and they went back home. So therefore we were free to start in to work, which we did immediately. I, of course, got good stock of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I visited each house 
given one of these little uh, booklets to each family. Talking to them as the door was open for such a thing, and then I would move on to other little places around. Now we have the privilege of uh, using that banana tree. We could get on where we liked and get off where we liked, and uh, get the next train uh, if it came along to somewhere else. So that was a wonderful help. And we started in right away to work up what's known as the Aguan Valley. I might say in the Aguan Valley today there are many, many little assemblies. In those days, of course, there were no Christians even. And it was a wonderful opportunity we had. In fact, as I look back on my life now, I can see that I was just like that little machine that you have on your car that you use only once. That's the starter. And without the starter, where would you be? Well, we're thankful to the Lord that we were used as the little starter, opening up the way at that time. Of course, it was many, many months, I'd say years, before we saw much done. But that was a wonderful day indeed when that old Indian, Carib Indian man came to the door to tell us that the Lord had saved his soul. That did indeed cheer us up and give us courage to go on. So while Brother Hawkins was laboring in St. Peter district, we were away at the other end, laboring there. Our work took us to many places. There was another train belonging to another banana company, which we were very glad to have us on board too as a banana. Of course, riding on a banana, you know, is not just like riding like a passenger. However, we did not mind that, as that's what we were there for, to open up the country for the gospel. We went to San Miguel and uh, to many other places around. And in those places today, there's a very strong assembly in San Miguel and also in Olanchito and in the many other places around. At the same time, Brother Hawkins, uh, well, I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, he hadn't been home for a long time. So I said we would try and look after the work while he was away. And we had the both places, and it took quite a while to travel from the one to the other. Now, at about that time, the Lord commenced to work by the Holy Spirit in many of the banana camps. And many, many people were saved in those years. In those years, it was wild men that were saved. That is, murderers, all kinds of drunkards and thieves. Well, mention all the other sins that you can't think of, and there you have it. But God is working amongst those men and we saw many of those men saved at that time. Then as time went on, the banana work gave out in the Trujillo district. A disease got into the bananas, and the works had to be closed down. And eventually the rails were lifted, which left Trujillo isolated. Now, seeing there was so much work around San Pedro Zula, Progreso, Tela, and all that district, we were exercised about going there for a time, which we did. In fact, uh, the country was very, very wild where we were in Trujillo. There was one part of the banana line that the banana company would not allow us to travel in. 
At least we could travel by train, but not get off the train. It was too dangerous. They had chopped up a Jehovah Witness woman that attempted to walk by foot along the line. And that was the end of their work. We could remain on the train, give out the gospel and the gospel tracts as we passed the banana company places until we got end to the end of the line and then we were advised where to go. There would be a place for us to sleep but not to attempt to go out. This we did respecting their wish. However, today, things are different. There are assemblies along that line today. Yes, things are much different. Well, we eventually got to Taylor. And in Taylor, of course, we knew it well. We had passed through on our way back and forth to San Pedro Zula. There were a few Christians there, and they uh, pressed upon us the need round that district so much so that we decided to come and live in Tela, seeing that we would be isolated in Trujillo without hope of getting out to the many other places. So we located in Tela. They had the native Christians a little had a little house they had fixed up for meetings. And uh, there we started in. Not only there, but around the whole district of Taylor, giving out God's word, the bus by gospel, by tracts, and by preaching the good old story to the people who came. I made it a plan to visit many places, uh, consequently with the Gospels, with Jesus, the Carabindian villages. And before leaving Trujillo, I might mention, there was a work started up in a wan, in a Carabindian village there. It would be a wonderful at the time and energy would allow me to tell of that work and how God was working amongst those dear people and how even through the Bible itself many were led to the Savior. But time will not permit, so we'll come back now to Tila and uh, we saw a wonderful work start up. But one thing we noticed, there was very little work being done amongst the children. So my wife was very much exercised about them, naturally. And the best way we found to do was to start a kind of a camp that is invite so many of the children of the Christians who were in the various places around to come to Tila and spend a week there and uh, sleep there and eat there. So we were able to fix up for them. So she got a hundred children right away to come and spend the week. That was the first camp. And today there are three campsites. And I might say that up to now at least they are not able to accommodate all who would like to come. But God began to work amongst those children and amongst the older young people at the same time. So camps were started for them. By this time, Brother Scullin had come along from Detroit and located in La Saiba, where he made his headquarters. And it was a hard pull there. Many things were opposed to the gospel. But today, today there's quite a work going on there. 
And at the same time, that's where he prints the little uh, paper that he puts out for Christians, their daddies, Biblicus. And that has gone all around. Now, the work, of course, wasn't without its difficulties. Once while, we, uh, uh, we are up here in the States trying to get a little change and rest. The enemy began to work, and he did his job well, in so much that he divided the Christians in the North Coast to such an extent that when we returned, we found the work in confusion. However, we took the troubles to the Lord, asked his direction, and as time went on in patience, we found that those who had left because they thought that it would be better with a more, well, uh, more uh, liberal kind of life. They could do more uh, if they led that life. They could live as a light, and they did do that too. But some of them soon found out it wasn't according to God's word, and before we left, we saw that completely wiped out. And the dear Christians pulling together as one again. While living in Trujillo, God came in and saved a family who afterwards became a wonderful help in the world. That was the family of Nasrallah. Time will not permit us to tell how the Lord commenced to work with the mother of those dear uh, boys and girls. God saved her soul through the efforts of my wife going in and giving her a helping hand while the family were down with typhoid fever. That, of course, was a wonderful thing for that mother. She could not understand why one would risk their own life for others. But my wife had the help of the Lord with her and was able to get that family on their feet again. Eventually, all received Christ as their Savior, and the most of them became very active in the work. Naim is now Dr. Naim Nasrara, living in uh, Chicago. He is a surgeon there. Uh, one of the girls, Esma, eventually married Stan Hanna, commended from Houston direction, and they are working in the Lord's work in Honduras now. Manuel, he followed his occupation in the bank and eventually became the first vice president. He has indeed been a wonderful help in many ways. The Lord gave him much wisdom and he was able to help by his uh, knowledge of business and other things. He was enabled to help in forming the uh, Salas Evangelicus of the Honduras. That is what the government required. All religions to be registered with the government. So he was able to do that and help in many other ways, not only then, but up to this present day. He is indeed very active. <laughs>